And David learned a very important lesson, that God is our avenger. God is. What are you going through? I don't know. All I do know, though, is God is your avenger. Amen. When people crush you, when people wrong you, I don't know what his plan is, but I do know that he's your avenger. I do know that he is with you through the experience. He has not left you. He is not afflicting you and beating you because he loves you. He is there, and at the right time, he will avenge. At the right time, he will bring you to the streams of, uh, of water. And, you know, as the, as the psalm says, that he is our shepherd, we shall not want. He will anoint your head with oil. He will take care of you. It's hard to remember this, though, but it's very important because there's another reason why it was important that David remembered. I just want you to remember this. If you look at chapter 25, it is nestled right in between <coughs> two extremely important stories. The first I've already mentioned, where David spares Saul's life in the cave. Now, if you look at chapter 26, you'll see that it's almost like deja vu. David spares Saul's life again. The immediate story after this one. God knew the events that were going to happen, and God had this reflected in such a way that it would tell us something important. See, it's not only just the words, the verses, it's how God put together the stories to show us something important. You see, if what it's telling us is, if David had have taken things into his own hands, gone and killed Nabal and slaughtered everybody at his place, he would have gone over the edge enough, gone into the territory of bloodshed and self-avenging enough, that probably when he found Saul lying on the ground, I think it was Abishai, said, look, there's his spear. Just let me do it. I'll pick it up and I'll pin him to the ground. That David would have said, do it. Let's get rid of him. Because he would have already had blood stained on his hands. He wouldn't have had the moral courage. But because he listened to God's voice for him. And now, it may seem like a very big thing what he was about to do to Nabal, and it was. But in the scheme of killing Saul, it was not as big, right? It was still big, but that, wiping out the leader of a country and usurping the country before God did it for you, that's had, that would have had even more consequences. But he may have done it. For David, this was a crucial time, and he thought, this isn't the same issue I've been dealing with all along. He thought it was different, so he didn't have the same restraint when he was dealing with Nabal. This is a lesson for us today. You do not know what is going to happen to you tomorrow what you are going to face, what decisions you're going to have to make. And that's why today, in every moment you're living in, you have to let God have the control. You have to trust God to be the avenger. You have to, because if you don't at one point, there may be a bigger time just the next step ahead. And you might not have the mind to trust in them. Amen. So I implore you, today and every day, it's a new year, guys. Now, we can change course anytime, but right now, we're all thinking even more so about what we can change course on. I implore you, for this year and every year ahead, remember and trust that God is when you are tired, when you are torn, when you are beaten and burdened and desiring to have your avenging, I ask that you will tell Jesus. We're going to sing about that today. It's actually hymn 485. I must tell Jesus.
Will you tell him? Will you trust him?